Now, the rest of the story. Welcome back to the rest of the story, and I actually end up making a return back down to the valley. So I took the Bobcat and the Vernig grapple bucket down because in the process of spreading fertilizer just the day before, I had noticed the amount of tree limbs and whatnot that had either fallen into the field or had been blown into the field from, I'm assuming, that excessive wind we've had in the last you know, few months. So the grass is starting to green up. Areas of it has actually been bit by the cold weather where you can definitely tell the grass had started to grow and it's stunted because we are dealing with, oh, well, the overnights are below freezing. So that's kind of unfortunate for this time of year, but a uh, big reason why I wanted to go down and get this cleaned up because some of these, I mean, here's a good example right here. Uh, I really don't want to risk running much of this in through the, the disc bus, the disc bind or any of our machinery at that. So the grapple bucket makes really quick, fun work of, out of it. Uh, if I've never really promoted this bucket too much, but it's great for pretty much everything from cleaning brush to picking up rocks um, to the point, honestly, uh, for the big rocks, yes, I was using the grapple, but I've actually considered maybe just getting a regular rock bucket without the grapple, uh, just because the amount of area, you know, visibility uh, that you can't see with the grapples, but then you get a random boulder that you have to pick up that you can't lift up without the use of the grapple. So there's gives and takes. So it's also good for home decoration renovation too if you gotta do some interior demolition but um, going through and raking up like these limbs works really good I mean once you get used to it uh, skims across the ground for the most part I mean you will dig in if you have the the bucket tilted ahead too far so it's you know too steep of an angle but uh, really good as a as a yard rake as a field rake I mean, any of the, the smaller limbs that it is leaving, I mean, it goes through the disc bind between the rotary blades and the flails. It's going to shred up any, any sticks or twigs that, that go through it anyway. So I'm kind of hoping, aiming for this to be the last time that I got to be down here for a while <clears throat> outside of, you know, just coming down to see how the crop is, you know, the hay crop is, is doing. Um, the only outlier may be because I've thought about it. I wanted to do it. It's just, you know, having the ability to when, when timing is, is appropriate is put the sprayer in the back of the gator and come down with a tank or two of that, uh, radiate that foliar and spray some of the areas down here that. A, I didn't get completely covered with fertilizer, which I was able to get over the majority of it, a bit more than I thought I would, uh, to be quite honest. But also to spray that radiate as more of a trial on my first crop growth to see if I can tell any visible, noticeable differences between spraying it before my first cutting even, because it was very evident on the second and third cuttings you know the regrowth um, but it'd be interesting to know if it's a product that I could use going forward where I maybe need to be to have a little bit more incentive to go through and spray this radiate uh, before my first cutting even because a different sprayer is on my list of things I'd like to acquire I mean it's not without trying over the years I've I mean I've tried what, two different sprayers now where I uh, foolishly was overconfident thinking that um, they were going to go for for what I was willing to pay and um, I was outbid both times by the first one was by a quite a margin I mean over 10 grand um, and the second one was I mean I think a couple of grand but um, I'm just keeping my expectations low because I do know that when I'm buying a sprayer, I'm not really looking for one for spraying the row crops. So I don't want to put a huge amount of money into something that I'm only using it for spraying pastures or, or hay crops. 
And I'm getting a really good example of what what I'm down here trying to achieve. You can see all these limbs and sticks that I'm just running right along the waterway, the grass here, and I'm picking up, I'd say easily 90% that's there, and you see it's all brushy and whatnot, and then tilt it all the way ahead. I got the bucket tilted as far as I can, and then I actually lock the grapple teeth down on it and I'm able to pick up the majority of the pile that I was picking up there and then I can take it and place it wherever I want and say these buckets a grapple bucket I mean a proper one too not not a light lightly built chintzy one because Ryan bought one on an auction a while back we would have destroyed that within the first six hours of running it I promise you um, this thing is built heavy I mean it's we haven't been kind to this this grapple bucket. It's it's done everything we needed to do, um, wanted it to do. I mean, it was well worth the money. But it allows you to do a lot more of this um, clean up, move around work that would have required a lot more um, grunt work um, to be able to do it if you didn't have a grapple. I mean, I think with this tree, point in case I'm down in the bottom. Um, it's actually pretty soft where I'm at and I try to pick this up almost hits the skid steer yep now it's one of the risks you have of doing this kind of stuff um, go through latch the yep, see didn't have it all the way on and crunch made sure I snapped it down right there and then I was able to pick it up out of the way you can't see the stumps on the right side that I was picking it up over and I still have the chains on the Bobcat <clears throat> now if I sound kind of mon monotone I'm have been for the last couple of videos um, I'm getting over something I've had a pretty severe cold and it's I'm, I'm kicking it but um, it's still kind of got me a little down but I got the chains on the bot on the tires yet um, the chains aren't just for dealing for ice uh, down here on the soft ground. I mean, I'm I'm settling in not sink sinking in But you can definitely I can definitely see where my tracks are If it wasn't for the chains on the back of the tires, I would have been stuck so quick. I mean, it's just the name of the game down here I mean, I've been down here used to bottom ground how this place in particular handles with with early season soft soft dirt whatnot um, trying to keep from getting overconfident because that's when you get in trouble but at least familiar with the cans and can cannots the things I can't do um, and going through and this was an area you can see it's actually growing up that I was able to cut for second crop and then that tree that I initially picked up um, had fallen down I just never had a chance to do anything with it there's two or three um, trees that are kind of standing out in the middle of the field I'm gonna be cutting those off at ground level and basically cutting them as low as possible and getting them out of there because they're just in the way um, this whole bottom is was flooded I don't think you, I don't know if I pointed it out to you early on in this video I actually actually panned across where you could still see the water standing on the low areas which is to be expected the landowner said it's more stereotypical than what it was when they were farming it because they used to do exactly what i did last year where they would make two cuttings off of it might have just been one cutting on most years is what he said but uh, typically they always took one cutting off of it but he said that it was late in the summer when it does get drier out and those low areas that are currently holding water are, are dried up. <clears throat> yes, I do have that uh, single shank ripper, the mole plow. Um, going down right now and trying to do anything with it would be disastrous. The reason I say that is because the ground is soft. I'll be creating ruts with the tractor, plus the fact that the soil profile across the whole works is, is soft. So it's not like it's just... Um, a centered area of a low-lying spot um, it's it's like two or three acres worth so it's gonna have to to dry up a little bit more so I can do something with it so 
with the tires being, I know I'm kind of all over the board, the tires being kind of flat or bald on the skids to here, I have new tires for it, but um, trying to get as much life out of them as I can and using the chains, it does allow you to dig through some of these soft spots where the chains are digging into the mud and it's giving you just enough of that traction you can keep going. So once this job is done, which it is done, I can focus on, well, I'm actually going to be working on the shed the rest of the day. So um, I got done right right as it started to really rain and pour. So I'm out of video. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. I'll talk to you guys later.